Hi everyone, I'm Tyler with Great Trunk RFID. Today we're excited to announce that we're launching a three-part series of the complete RFID asset tracking solution. Today, for part one, we're going to be focused on how to choose the proper RFID tag for your asset tracking application. We're lucky enough to be joined by Colin Black, the RFID Business Development Director at Metalcraft, to share some insight on the importance of how to choose the proper RFID tag. So sit back, stay tuned, and watch as we discuss the importance of the RFID tag. When choosing the proper RFID tag, there are three things that you need to take into consideration. First, the surface that you're applying the RFID tag to. Secondly, you need to be aware of the environment that you are in. And third, you need to know if there's a size restriction on the asset that you are tagging. We need to know how big of a tag that we can put on the asset that you are tagging. All three of these have a direct impact on the read range performance of your RFID tag. So we're going to get started and dive on in to how the surface affects the read range of the RFID tag. All right, so today I'm joined by Colin Black, the uh, RFID Business Development Director at Metalcraft. He was also the former RFID engineer at Metalcraft as well before he took the position of RFID Business Development. Uh, today we're going to get a little insight from Colin as far as um, how the surface really affects the read range performance. So uh, Colin, thanks for joining us. Uh, really just want to understand your your opinion and your thought process on how the surface really does affect the RFID read range performance. Absolutely. Yeah. First off, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Um, so I'll start off dielectric surfaces or non-metal surfaces typically allow the tag to behave in, a, in the way that it all of the RF energy that's coming from the RF reader can be directed towards the inlay itself. So when you think of the inlay being an antenna, it's uh, typically an aluminum and or copper, um, all that RF energy is going to be basically attracted towards those metal um, ears of the antenna, which is allowing the energy to flow towards the chip of the inlay and then power that. So those dielectric or non-metal surfaces aren't going to interfere as much with that RF energy coming in towards the inlay. So um, more of the power can go towards the chip, which allows for you to have a better performance um, backscattered back to the reader. Um, and this is right now, I'm kind of referring to the UHF side. Um, HF or NFC is a little differently, but um, some of the same principles apply from the conductive and dielectric side of things. But um, vice versa, when you look at uh, metal surfaces, and I'll focus on metal first, um, given this, the fact that the metal surface is the same metal typically as your inlay antenna, aluminum, the conductivity of that metal surface is very much going to reflect and prevent that RF signal coming in from being directionalized towards the chip. So you're gonna get less power going towards the chip because it's getting reflected, it's getting, it's bouncing off the metal. It's not able to hone itself in towards the chip directly, um, which is why typically if you have an antenna that's flat against metal, you're not gonna get any read hard at all because um, that there's no way for the power to be directionalized towards the chip itself. So, when, when we're trying to choose the proper RFID tag, there's an on-metal RFID tag and a non-metal RFID tag to really um, help enhance the read range performance. So what has Metalcraft done uh, to manufacture these on-metal RFID tags? And is there anything technical behind that or in the construction of the RFID tag that really enhances the performance of those on-metal RFID tags? Yep. So. Metalcraft, we worked with some other third-party suppliers, or not suppliers, but third parties to develop a tag that functions on metal surfaces. And kind of the secret behind it, 
outside of the design of the antenna itself, which I'll talk about in a second, is allowing that chip to have some form of standoff from the metal. Um, the reason for that is um, when that chip or that antenna is flat against that metal surface, we talk about it's almost grounded out in a sense where if that chip is flat against the metal, like I said, it's not able to flow. The energy electrical current isn't able to flow towards that chip because it's grounded out against that metal surface. Whereas if you give it some standoff with, in this case, like a foam ice insulator, um, now that chip is able to receive an electrical current into um, the circuit to power it. Um, so we talk about that standoff being important. Um, the distance of that obviously can affect the performance. Um, the greater the standoff, you know, the better chance you are going to have for the tag to be red. Um, but you know, that's kind of the name of the game is, you know, nobody wants a tag that's got sticks an inch out of the surface. You know, you want that thing to be as flat as possible. So um, Metalcraft, we, we worked and we designed um, our universal family um, of products and the design is is very important for those tags to be as thin profile as they are um, so it has this slotted l fold over design to it which what that design does is um, the chip side there's if you look at the two planes of the inlay being folded over the chip side is actually standing off with that foam insulator in between um, and then it abs wraps around um, the foam um, and then on the bottom plane is just basically a wide surface area of metal antenna um, that basically contacts um, the metal surface that the tag is mounted on um, and what that basically allows um, part of the design of that is by having that fold over wrap around that plane you know in contact with the metal it almost allows for that tag to boost the performance when it's on metal because it almost behaves as if that metal surface is a part of the antenna itself to some extent. I mean, you're not gonna um, see just, you know, crazy, you know, uh, boost in performance, but for most on metal tags, they're tuned and designed to work on metal. Whereas if you stick that on something else, it probably won't read as well as it would on them. So that's kind of the, what Metalcraft worked to uh, get designed and patented from that side of things. Awesome, great, great explanation um, as far as how to understand the surface and why the surface is so important in choosing the proper RFID tag. So um, if you have a minute, go check out Colin's LinkedIn profile. He has a great video series, RFID Made Simple, which really helps explain, you know, in, in the simplest terms, how RFID really works at, at, in, in any industry, whether it's RFID asset tracking or in manufacturing. Uh, he has a lot of insight on his LinkedIn profile page. Colin did an unbelievable job explaining how the surface really does affect the read range performance and your tag selection. Who would have known there's so many things that you have to consider when choosing the proper RFID tag? The surface, however, is only the first thing that you have to consider. Second thing that you need to consider is the environment that the tag is in. You need to understand what type of environment that the tag has to withstand. If you're in the construction industry, obviously the tag is going to be going through a lot more abrasion than it would an IT asset. So the construction of the tag is extremely important so that it withstands the environment that it is in. If you put a tag on a piece of equipment out in the construction field, you want that tag to survive. The most time consuming part of applying an RFID tag is actually putting it on the asset and recording it in the database. So the last thing you want to have happen is that RFID tag to fall off out in the field and then you have to reapply new tags. Understanding the environment really helps the manufacturer of the RFID tag choose the proper adhesive and the proper substrate in order to achieve the best read range performance and extend the life of the RFID tag. Because the main goal ultimately is for the RFID tag to last the life of the asset. When choosing another RFID tag for let's say an IT asset, it becomes a little bit easier. 
The IT asset isn't going to be out in the weather elements. It's not going to be have high abrasion. Really, we're just looking for a low profile tag that can withstand the going in and out of, of a backpack um, or you know, having an aggressive adhesive so the kids aren't trying to pick it off later on. The environment is extremely important to understand how to make the RFID tag last as long as possible with the ultimate goal of applying the tag once and having it last for the life of the asset. Next, we're going to get into the size restrictions and how the size of the RFID tag affects the read range and ultimately helps you decide choosing the proper RFID tag for your assets. One of the final things we need to consider when choosing the proper RFID tag is the amount of room we have on the asset to actually apply an RFID tag to. Sometimes there's many size restrictions that are associated with your asset. Maybe it's a handheld tool, or maybe it's a smaller piece of equipment that doesn't necessarily have a lot of space for an RFID tag. On the other hand, you might have an IT asset, such as a monitor, that has a large area on the back of it to apply a larger tag. When choosing the RFID tag, you need to consider the read range that you're looking to achieve. The larger the read range typically means a larger tag, whereas the smaller tag will typically give a smaller read range. So you need to consider the read range, the desired read range that you're looking for when choosing your RFID tag. Have that number in mind, whether it's five feet or whether it's 35 feet. We need to have that number in mind when we're choosing the tag. Ideally, when we're doing an RFID asset tracking inventory, we want to have the largest read range possible based on the tags that we're putting on our assets. By doing this, we are efficiently capturing the RFID tag data while we're walking into a room. Hence, that's the reason we want to have the largest read range possible. It can be complicated, there are some compromises that you need to make, but ultimately, we're trying to maximize read range performance when we're doing an RFID asset tracking inventory. So in conclusion, there are three main areas that you need to consider when choosing the proper RFID tag. First, you need to consider the surface that the RFID tag is being applied to. Secondly, you need to understand the environment that the tag is going to be able to withstand. And thirdly, you need to understand the size that you have available on the asset that you are tagging. Because the size of the RFID tag greatly affects the read range performance. We hope this video helps you understand why choosing an RFID tag is so important for your RFID asset tracking application. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and subscribe to our Great Trunk RFID channel.